All right, in this video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of how to create an assessment using a mail merge. To do the mail merge for this example, I'm gonna be using Google Docs and Google Sheets uh, along with the add-on called Autocrat. Uh, now, the general idea of using this as a mail merge is so that I can get multiple assessments where each student gets the same general problem structure, but will have values that lead them to different answers. So they will ultimately, in the end, each get their own PDF uh, version of the test, but it's gonna be customized to them. So they will have values different than anybody else in the class. Um, so to do this, basically I've just taken the assessment that I already had. Um, in this case, it was just a short three problem uh, conservation of energy exam. Um, and I have replaced certain things with what's called a tag. In this case, a tag is anything that's surrounded by two greater than less than symbols. So you'll see a tag here for first, last, period, but then also I have tagged certain values in the problems themselves. So for example, in this first problem, what is the kinetic energy of a football with mass value one grams traveling at value two meters per second? On the student's uh, unique test, they are gonna have, instead of this tag, a number in that space. Uh, and that number is gonna take on the same formatting, uh, that the tag does, uh, and that number is predetermined uh, somewhere else. So I'm going to show you where those numbers ultimately come from. I've created a spreadsheet here that includes, uh, in this case, all the students of this class. And we're going to do a pretty small class, but I've done this for, for groups up to like 250 or more. Um, so this is very, very scalable. So say I have this class of, of seven James Bond actors, and um, I've indicated some information about each of them already. I just pulled this, uh, you can say, from, from a class log. And let's say, let's mix up the period there. So there's two small classes of these students. Now I also have spot spaces here for those seven values that I indicated with tags uh, in, the, um, in the template itself. So now I have space for the first name, last name, period, but then all of these values. Now I need numbers to go in those spaces. And if you remember in this example, uh, it was value one corresponded to the, the mass in grams of a football. Now I could just enter in any numbers that I wanted to here. I could just random, randomly type numbers and it would work. They would get random numbers. Um, and for a group of seven, not a big deal to do that, but a group of 250, that becomes a pretty strenuous task. So I use spreadsheet formulas to help me out with this. Uh, and this is the formula that I like to use. It's rand between. It's just short for random number between. And in this case, if it's a football grams, uh, let's say it's a random number between 100 and 300 grams. Uh, that way I'm not inventing a number every single time but also the number that it provides isn't gonna be just a totally random thing. I just drag that formula down uh, and it gives me hundreds of random numbers fitting this criteria. And I've done that for all of these values as well, using just different bounds to make the number reasonable. To get decimal, you have to get a little tricky and divide it by 10 because the rand between function gives you integers and dividing by 10 will then give you one decimal place divided by 100 will give you two and so on. Um, but what we've got here are these random numbers, but they are currently active formulas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy them over to my original sheet here, but I'm gonna paste them using the paste special function to paste the values only. The reason for doing this is if I didn't paste the values only and I just kept these rand between, or if I entered the rand between directly into these cells, then every time the mail merge runs, it's going to randomize again and I won't have a full, a complete record of what it was. Um, I have also gone ahead and just calculated the answers for myself. Uh, this will become uh, in handy later on, but since I knew that this first problem was a kinetic energy problem with a mass of value one and a velocity of value two, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So I just wrote a quick formula one half times value one uh, times value two squared. And I had to convert it to kilograms to, to make it the right units. But that allowed me to calculate everyone's unique answer very quickly. And like I said, that'll be handy later on. 
Now within this spreadsheet, uh, the add-on uh, exists. So you're not gonna use the add-on in the Google Doc template, but rather the spreadsheet with all of your data. So I'm gonna go into add-ons, um, and I already have this add-on. You might need to add it, uh, and you can do so uh, by saying get add-ons here. The add-on we're gonna use is called Autocrat. Uh, so I'm gonna open that up. And Autocrat basically will combine this spreadsheet with my template and then create new files for every single line on here. And I'm gonna create a new, a new job here. I had one that was already, already in there from before, but I'm gonna create a new one uh, and I'm gonna call this Energy Summit and save it. Now it's gonna ask me to choose a template. Uh, I'm gonna choose it from Drive because I have already created my template. Um, the template in this case needs to have all the tags that you want. Uh, it's just a Google Doc that you're using. Here in this case, uh, it's showing up for me because I recently had it open, but you can always search for it. I'm just selecting that template that I know is the right one. And it shows up there and I'm gonna hit next. Now it's gonna ask you to merge your tags with the data. Uh, I'm gonna be using sheet one here on this uh, spreadsheet because sheet one is the one that contains all the information that I want. So sheet one, and since I actually named these uh, this first row, I use the same names as I did in the tags earlier on, it automatically found them for me. Um, but for every tag that you have in your template, so first, if you remember, was where the first name should go, or value one is where I wanted value one to go, it will give you an option to map it to any column you want. Um, it automatically mapped it to value one because that's how I had it named. I'm gonna hit next. Then I wanted to create a file um, for that student. Um, and a couple things here, I want that file in this case to be a PDF. You could also have it create a unique Google doc for each student if that's uh, more the speed that you want to go. But I want a, a fixed uh, PDF for these students. So I'm gonna make a file name here that has some unique characteristics for that student. I'm gonna call it an energy summative. But then I'm also going to include the student's name. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna use those tags from before. So less than, less than, first, greater than, greater than, space, less than, less than, last, greater than, greater than. And if you want things to come up alphabetically, you might do last, comma, first, however you choose that to be. I'm gonna say PDF, multiple output mode, that will make an individual one for each student. And then I'm gonna choose my mail merge um, destination folder. So if I say choose folder, it will give me an option to navigate anywhere that I want within this. Uh, and I think this will be good enough. I'm just gonna put it in this folder called mail merge summatives. I would recommend maybe making a unique folder for that, um, but that's, that's where these are gonna live. Then I, so I'm gonna say next. Uh, dynamic folder is an advanced feature if you want it to go to different folders based on tags and merge condition, um, same thing. And then if you want, uh, you could, and I've used this before, make a column that has emails in it and then pull from that to actually automatically send the file to the student as an email. So I've done that to give students like detailed rubric feedback. So it just mails it to them and they don't have access to anybody else's, but we're not gonna care about that right now. And then job triggers, we don't need to care about either. So we're gonna hit save. And then it's gonna lock in these rules for this particular example. And then all you need to do is just hit run job. Here you can see the, the other version that I had, it's got the same rules, so I'm not too worried about. So run job. And it's gonna go through each of these different rows and create a new file per row. It says seven rows will be merged. Um, and in this case, sometimes it takes a little while uh, to go through all of this, but you can see a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, it created a couple new uh, columns there, an ID, a URL, a link, and a merge status. Uh, and this will update as things go, uh, but 
just for the sake of time, I'm going to pause and it's going to be like a cooking show. You're going to, I'll come back when it's all done. All right, that was fast. My mail merge has run uh, all the way through. So I'm going to X out of this and then see what my result is. So what is the best part about this is it gives you this link to these documents. So what I do is I just take a copy of all of these links and I will make my own spreadsheet, a separate spreadsheet. Here, I'm just gonna add it as a tab just for ease. And then I just copy that in. And then this, it, I share this separate document with students. What's great about it is it has all of their names in there. Uh, and all they have to do is just click on their name and it will take them to their, um, their file and only their file. And the best part about this is with the mail merge, I included their name directly in the PDF. Um, so they can't just click and use somebody else's and then just say they clicked on the wrong one. Like it's got it all the way in there. Uh, and you'll notice a couple other things here in this final version, it has their name, it has their period. So no longer the tags. And then all of these numbers have been entered in based on whatever the random values were for that particular student. Um, so here for David, uh, we had 210 and eight. If we go back to our energy values, for David, the first two were 210 and eight. And what's great is when they submit it, you can have access to what their answer should be, even though they're all gonna be unique and it's gonna take a little bit longer to grade because you don't know necessarily the right answer for everyone. Um, it's pretty easy to just look at this spreadsheet um, down the line uh, to see what answer they should have gotten to. And if it's not, troubleshoot and figure out where they went wrong. All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, you could do this for any values or for any words if you wanted to, uh, to make unique summatives um, for every student that is in your class.